how to make XOR gate using NAND gate and how to make XNOR gate using NAND gate. That is what we are going to learn in this video very quickly. So without wasting time, let's get started. Here you can see the symbolic representation of XOR gate and this is the simplified equation of XOR gate. And finally here we have the truth table of XOR gate. In previous video I have explained that how to develop this XOR gate using basic gates. And if you want to know that then you can refer that video. Right now here in this video our aim is to develop this XOR gate using NAND gate. So here this is the symbolic representation of NAND gate. And here we have the output equation of NAND gate. And then we have the truth table of NAND gate. So we are going to use all this information to develop such a circuit that there is only NAND gates in whole circuit and the output of that circuit will be exactly similar to the XOR gate. And that is what it calls XOR gate using NAND gate. So now let's explore that. So this is the equation of XOR gate and this is the equation of NAND gate. So what is our aim? Our aim is to develop this equation in such a manner that it looks similar to this. Why we are doing? Because if this equation looks similar to this, then it would be easier for us to transform that equation into equivalent circuit using NAND gate. So we'll modify this equation and try to make it similar to this. So in first step what I'll do, I'll add two zeros and when you add two zeros to any equation, it does not create any difference in output. But here very interesting thing in digital electronics, A bar into A or B bar into B is equal to zero. How is it possible? Let me give you a logical explanation. This is the circuit, here our input is A and we are using NOT gate, so the output of NOT gate would be A bar. So here we have two inputs A and A bar and the output is A bar into A. So when A is 0, A bar would be 1. So here 0 and 1. So 0 into 1 output would be 0. And in second case, if A is 1, then A is 1 here and A bar is 0. Again 1 into 0 would be 0. So whatever input you give, either it is 1 or 0, but the output will remain only 0. So I think this is clear to you. Now instead of this 0, what I am going to do, I am going to replace this 0 with A bar into A. So our new equation would look like this. 0 will be replaced with A bar into A and this 0 is replaced with B bar into B. Now here in this term you can see A into B bar and A bar into A. This A is common in both this equation. And if you look at this term, A bar into B and B into B bar b is common in this. So if I take a common from these two and b common from these two, I'll get new equation like this. Now here we have a chance to go closer to this equation and how it is possible? Using de Morgan's theorem. It is the equation of de Morgan's theorem that a into b whole bar is equal to a bar plus b bar. So what do we have? Here we have a bar plus b bar, right? So we can replace this with a into b whole bar. So if we modify this equation, it looks like this. So now here we are one step closer to this form. We have got A into B whole bar. Here we have one more equation. A is equal to A double bar. What does it mean and is it true or not? Let me give you a brief idea about that. Double bar means here our input is A. So when we use first NOT gate, the output would be A bar. But the A bar is given to another NOT gate, the output would be A double bar. So if you give 0 input over here, the output here is 1 and the output here is 0. So A is equal to A double bar. And if you give 1 here, the output would be 0 and the output of this stage would be 1 again. So any of the input you provide, whether it is 0 or 1, the output will be the same as input. And that is why we can say that A is equal to A double bar. So now the same thing we are going to implement with this equation. We are going to add double bar to the whole equation. Now here if you observe it closely, then this is the one section and this one is the another section. Let's say it is as a C and it as a D. So you can see it as C plus D whole bar. C plus D whole bar. 
So as per De Morgan's theorem, you can write C plus D whole bar is equal to C bar into D bar. So the same thing we are going to implement here and this equation will be remodified as this equation. Now here this C is this section and this D is this section. Now if you look this equation closely then you can relate this section with this A and this section with this B. So it's A into B whole bar. So here we have this as A and this as B and we have whole bar of this. So more or less we have converted this form similar to this form. So now it's time to implement this equation in circuit form. So here we have XOR gate and the basic equation of XOR gate and then we have the modified equation of XOR gate. So here we are going to convert this final equation into circuit form and then that circuit will verify whether the output of that is equivalent to XOR gate or not. So first we will start with this equation. Here you can see the innermost section is A into B bar. So we will take this A into B bar and it is simply a NAND gate because the output of NAND gate is A into B bar. So to represent this A into B bar, we will have this NAND gate. So we can say this is A, this is B and the output of this is A into B bar. Now here if you look closely, this section, right, it looks like A into this whole bar. So if we take this A into B as C, then it looks like A into C whole bar. So combining this together, there is another NAND gate. So what we'll do, this C is nothing but simply A into B whole bar. So this becomes our C. So we'll use this as our C and our A would be this input. So what we'll do now, we'll make this as A input. So we have A over here and C over here. So when we combine these things together, we can have A into C whole bar. So here we have A into C whole bar, which is equal to A into A into B whole bars bar. Now, if we look on this side, here we have A into B bar. So if you observe over here, we have already created A into B bar. So what we'll do, we'll use this NAND gate for this section also. So now if we move further, it looks like the same thing. It is B into C whole bar. So this is what C we have already created. Now what we'll do, we'll take this as B. So this will become our B, this will become our C. So we supposed to add one NAND gate and that will give us the output B into C bar, which is equal to B into A into B whole bars bar. So up to here we have got this much. Now we supposed to add another whole bar and how we can do this thing? We'll take this as A and this as B. So what are we supposed to do? The output of this will become A and the output of this will become B. So it's again A into B whole bar. So finally, we're supposed to add one more NAND gate in output and the input of that NAND gate would be one is this and the another one is this. So if we add it, it looks like this. And finally, this will be the Y which is given over here. So here we have completely implemented the given equation or newly developed equation to create XOR gate using NAND gate. And now it's time to verify whether the developed circuit is correct or not. This is our XOR gate. This is the basic equation of XOR gate. And this one is the modified equation of XOR gate. And why we have modified this equation? Because we want to develop XOR gate using a NAND gate. So the equation of NAND gate is like this and we will use this truth table of NAND gate to verify the truth table of XOR gate. So now here we have a circuit that we have just developed using NAND gate. 
and this is the truth table of XOR gate. So it is the truth table of XOR gate and this is the truth table of NAND gate. Now we are going to verify this XOR gate's truth table using this circuit. So first we are going to use these two inputs. If A and B both are 0. So here both are 0. So when both the inputs to the NAND gate is 0, the output is 1. So here the output of this NAND gate will be 1. So here 0 and 1. Here 1 and 0. So if one of the input of NAND gate is 0 and the another one is 1, the output is still 1. So here the output will be 1 and here the output would be 1. So the input to this NAND gate, both the inputs are 1. So when both the inputs to the NAND gate is 1, the output is 0. So the output we get over here is 0. So first condition is satisfy and that's very nice. Now it's time to check the second condition. Here one input is 0 and the another one is 1. So A is 0 and B is 1. So here it is 0, here it is 1, A 0, B 1. So when A is 0 and B is 1, the output of NAND gate is 1. So here we have 1 in output. So here we have 1 and here we have 1. So when one of the input is 0 and the another one is 1, the output is 1 but when both the inputs are 1 the output of NAND gate is 0 so here we have 0 so 1 and 0 so when there is 1 and 0 in input the output is 1 so here we have 1 in output and that satisfies the second condition so now we are going for the third condition when a is 1 and b is 0 so here a is 1 b is 0 so here 1 and 0 so when A is 1, B is 0, the output is 1. So we have 1 over here. So 1 here, 1 here, 1 here and 0 over here. So when both the inputs are 1, the output is 0 for the NAND gate. So here we have 0 and here we have 1. So one of the input is 0 and the another one is 1. The output of NAND gate is 1. So here we can get 1 in output and that satisfies the third condition. Now we'll go for the fourth and final condition, the final possible combination to this XOR gate. Here both the inputs are same. So here we are giving 1 and here also 1. So when both the inputs are 1, the output is 0. So we'll get 0 over here. So 0 here and 1 here, 0 here and 1 here. So when both the input to the NAND gate is different, the output is still 1. So here both the inputs are different, here 2, so the output would be 1. So both inputs to this final NAND gate is 1 and when both the inputs are 1, the output is 0. So the output would be 0. And that satisfies our final condition. So it's cheerful time for us. We have successfully developed XOR gate using NAND gate. Our developed circuit satisfies all the condition. So we can say that we have developed XOR gate using NAND gate. Now it's time to develop XNOR gate using the NAND gate. Here this is the XNOR gate. It is the output equation of XNOR gate and the truth table of XNOR gate. And we are going to use the same NAND gate to develop the XNOR gate. So here this is our XNOR gate and we want to develop XNOR gate using the NAND gate. Here it is a little bit trickier. We do not need to follow the entire process because XNOR gate is nothing but the combination of XOR gate and NOT gate. If the output of XOR gate is given to NOT gate and then we'll check final output, it becomes the XNOR gate. So what we'll do? We have just developed the XOR gate using NAND gate. So we'll use that circuit. And now we need to find how to develop this NOT gate using NAND gate. In order to have NOT gate from the NAND gate, you supposed to short both the inputs and you will have the NOT gate. Is it true or not? We are going to verify using this truth table. Let's say it is A and it is the output Y. So if A is 0, both the inputs are 0. This is the truth table of NAND gate. If both the inputs are 0, the output is 1. So output is 1. So it's inverting. The input is 0, the output is 1. 
Now let's say if a is equal to 1. So both the inputs are 1 now. So when both the inputs are 1, the output is 0. So we'll get 0. So it's clear that in order to have NOT gate, you just need to modify this much only. So now we just need to combine these two circuits. And we have this circuit. So this is the equivalent circuit of XNOR gate or we can say we have developed XNOR gate using NAND gate. Now here we are quickly going to verify that the circuit is right or not. This is our A input and this one is our B input and this is our final output Y. So when both are 0, A0, B0, so this is 0, 0. When both the inputs are 0, the output is 1. This is 0, this is 1, this is 1, this is 0. So when both are different, still the output is 1. So here we have 1, here we have 1. So when both the inputs are 1 to the NAND gate, the output is 0. So here we have 0 output. When both the input to this NAND gate is 0, the output is 1. So we'll get 1 in output. And that is what we are getting here in output. So the first condition is clearly verified. And the same way you can check the remaining two conditions and verify whether this circuit is true or not. And I want you to do that thing and then write that in comment section whether this developed circuit is satisfying the XNOR gate truth table or not. For more videos on digital electronics, you can refer this playlist on digital electronics. And if you want to discuss anything with me, then you can join my Telegram or Instagram group. There we'll discuss in detail. So see you in next video.